Hello, it's me, French Ted, and we are here for episode number 70... Oh, I just had it in my head. Four? 74. I'm going to say 74. Might be wrong, but it's in the title, so you know, you'll see it. Um, but we are here for night six. Definitely remember that. Uh, for our all-in Grand Prix. And uh, yeah, we got another big main event last week. It was the leaders of Drew Galloway and Volta facing off. And this week... It is the match that Jeff Cobb has been waiting for. Uh, Jeff Cobb and John Moxley square off in their B-block match in the main event tonight. We've also got some insane matches, including Brian Danielson and Kenny Omega, Nick Jackson, Hangman Page, uh, Will Ospreay and Volta. You know, awesome matches tonight. And then, of course, we've got our six-man um, trios match at the beginning, which also should be a really fun affair. Keith Lee is not in a, a block match tonight, so there's a chance for someone to catch up to him in the B block. Um, and there's also a chance for Will Ospreay to uh, pull Volta back from his two-point lead. Uh, so, yeah, lots to play for tonight. We are at the midway point of the Grand Prix, I believe. Um, yeah, midway point. Uh, because the final night, night 12, everyone's wrestling at once. So by the time we get to that, there'll be one match remaining for everyone. Um, but yeah, night six, super excited. We've got Renee, RJ and Paul White here as usual in the pre-show. So yeah, let's uh, dive straight into our opening exhibition match. Oh, an 80. Mm. I'm not going to lie, I thought it'd be a little bit better than that, but you know, it's fine. Uh, in about that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, it's the team of Keith Lee, Darby Allen, and Bandido that defeat Roosh, Matt Cardona, and Juice Robinson when Keith Lee pins Matt Cardona with the spirit bomb. Um, you can also see here that MGF is at ringside watching, um, and he's just seen his best bro get power bombed through the map. Um, and Keith Lee gets the win, uh, continuing his dominant display and definitely carrying this match with his 93 performance. The next best being Juice Robinson and Matt Cardona with an 80. Uh, Roosh with a terrible 71. Uh, Bandido with 73 and Darby Allen with a 74. Uh, yeah, you know, fair enough. Uh, let's move on to the matches that actually matter tonight. Uh, starting off with... Nick Jackson and Hangman Page. And again, an 82. Why? Why? Holding back. Hang Why is Hangman holding back again? That's all he ever does. Uh, but either way, about that had superb wrestling, um, apparently, and good heat. Nick Jackson defeats Hangman Page. Nick Jackson gets his first points of the tournament, finally. And it's against a former team member in Hangman, Adam Page. So, yeah. Uh, Adam Page not doing anywhere near as well as we probably thought he would. Um, only with two points so far, six nights in. Uh, now Nick Jackson is equal with Hangman Page. So yeah, you get better buck his ideas up. Um, although I do believe that Hangman Page has had a few, you know, pretty tough opponents so far. So maybe further down the line it might get a little bit easier for him. It is kind of, you know, how the, how the cards are handed to you, I guess. Um, but an 82, you know... I thought this would do a little bit better, but hey ho, it's still above 80, so I'll take that. 85 from Nick and 92 from Hangman, meaning that in B block, uh, Prince Devitt is the only man without a win. Can he do it later tonight when I believe he faces Pack? Let's continue with the show. Oh, and speaking of Prince Devitt, <laughs> he, only gonna, he only goes and does it. And about the had great wrestling and good heat in an 88 rated match prince devitt gets the win and defeats pack in nine minutes with the fujiwara armbar very similar to mjf's finishing move you know which is a little bit interesting um but yeah prince devitt with a 76 pack definitely leading the line with a 90 uh, but it wasn't enough prince devitt got the win and made pack tap pack may be tapping to prince devitt you know he's quite low down in the table um, maybe just to preserve energy because you know we're halfway through it's already grueling for a lot of these guys um, you know losing points to Devitt who he probably thinks can't catch up might be more of a tactic uh, than anything else because you know we'd expect Pac to probably win this um, so yeah it could be tactics or it could be that Prince Devitt was simply the better man I mean it is good old Prince Devitt he's you know he's baller so there's a reason why he's in this tournament 
But nonetheless, an 88, our best show of the night so far. Can anyone top it? I certainly hope so. Uh, but let's continue with the show. Um, where we head backstage and we can see Jake Roberts very intently talking to Drew Galloway. Drew Galloway sat down on a little fold-out uh, steel chair, just nodding away, listening, while Jake Roberts is hunched over, just whispering and talking uh, just a load of tactics and thoughts and everything you know trying to align drew's focus after last night's defeat to walter you know drew currently still sitting in second place definitely wants to start getting those points again to catch up to walter um and probably a small part of him is hoping that will osprey can do what he didn't and stop walter from getting any more points uh let's return to the ring where we have oh 98 so close so close to being a 100 Ah, oh. I do think, now, as far as I'm aware, matches under 20 minutes in most products can't get a 100 score, because um, I think it's lengthy matches allow you to get world-class scores, um, and the lengthy match, in, from what I know, is 20 minutes plus. So if this match was, for example, 21 minutes, there's every chance this could have been a 100 but a 98, I mean, it's Kenny Omega versus Brian Danielson. What else do you expect? Um, so in about that had sensational wrestling. Oh, that might be my new favorite. And great heat. Kenny Omega gets the win. He defeats Brian Danielson in just under 16 minutes with the one winged angel. Both men getting a 98 performance. Kenny Omega and Brian Danielson both have great chemistry. Brian and Bria are a good pairing. Kenny's got a hot new move. Got the crowd buzzing. I mean, wow. This is definitely a match of the year contender. Along with Kenny Omega and Roosh. Kenny Omega might be our best performing wrestler right now. Like, let's be honest. Think about the Golden Lover matches. Every single time he's been in singles action. I don't think he's had a match under 85 yet. Um, we might have to check that at the end of this tournament. Should he continue this form. But Kenny Omega, wow. And it's another point for Kenny. I think he joins... Keith Lee at the top now I think if I remember correctly yeah, he, they should now be on eight points with Keith Lee who of course isn't wrestling tonight well he did but in the exhibition match uh, Brian Danielson still sitting on those three points uh, yeah not the best from uh, D Bry um, or Bry D yeah <laughs> 98 wow uh, I don't think anyone's topping this let's be honest uh, it'd be amazing if they did but let's continue with the show and we've got Drew Galloway taking on Miro in an 88. And in about that had superb wrestling, my favourite word, and good heat. Drew Galloway is back. Uh, bouncing straight back from that loss to Volta. He defeats Miro in 11 minutes with the Claymore kick. An all-out brawl this one was. Uh, CJ Perry doing great work at ringside. No Jake Roberts at ringside, though. That's important to note. He, I don't know what he said to him. Maybe he was like, you go out there, prove to me. X, Y, Z, who knows. But there was no jake roberts tonight ringside um and drew gets the win nice and easy and then he just immediately rolls out the ring heads out back you know he's come out here he's done his job he's come back maybe uh jake has kind of knocked a bit of like you know just do your job get done get back rest up um that's exactly what drew's done in an 88 match drew with a 90 rated performance and miro with an 87 wow awesome awesome match Let's continue with the night where we have Renee talking to her husband backstage in what usually would be an interview segment. She says, John, I'm not actually here to interview you. I don't want to know your thoughts about tonight's match because, you know, I know your thoughts. You know, we talk, you know, about things. I'm just here to wish you luck and to just be sensible. And he's like, what? And she's like, you know what I mean? It's Cobb. The heat is high, you know, tensions are high. There's a lot of issues between you guys. Just focus on the Grand Prix and focus on winning. And he's like, okay. And then a little on the cheek. And she's like, best of luck, babe. And he's like, okay. Um, so yeah, 100 rated segment because, you know, we love seeing people in love together. Uh, we get 100 sometimes with MJF and Matt Cardona. We get 100s with Renee and John. You know, it just makes sense. Uh, yeah, so main event tonight, John Moxley taking on Jeff Cobb, the match that we've all been waiting for after Moxley walked out on the match from Collision that, what, like two weeks ago now? 
Um, but yeah, we're heading back to the ring now. We've got a couple more matches before that main event. The next one is Volta and Will Ospreay. Uh, in a bout that had superb wrestling and good heat, Walta defeats Will Ospreay in 15 minutes by making him tap with the rear naked choke. An 88 rated match. Walter with a 92. Osprey with a 93. The match suffered because of their lack of selling. You know, Will Osprey loves to not sell. Um, he's, he's bloody known for that. Walter as well, apparently, maybe not the best seller. Um, but they got great chemistry, which is awesome. So imagine if the selling was on display. God, what number that could have been? 94, maybe? 95? Uh, but still, I think the main takeaway from this is Walter wins again. I believe he is the first person on double figure points. That's 10 points from Walter in the last six nights. He's had five block matches and he's won all five of them. I think the only other people who are undefeated so far are John Moxley and Keith Lee. Keith, of course, was in the exhibition match night. John is in the main event. So let's see if he can continue that form. But I think Volta is the name on everyone's lips. I think he is clearly the favourite um, coming out of this tournament. So we'll have to see if he can even lose. I mean, yeah. Let's uh, let's carry on. 88. Nice. Moving on. Uh, we have got... Oh, a really bad... Oh, no. An injury. No, 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 no. We had to call an audible. Injury. A match was changed on the fly. No. That means that Jay's out for a while. Oh no. In a bout that had superb wrestling and good heat, Zack Sabre Jr. defeats Jay White. Um, but, I mean, Jay White was meant to win, uh, but an injury to Jay White meant that an audible was called and the finish was, had to be changed. Uh, so Zack Sabre Jr. actually gets some points. Uh, and Jay White's injured. A torn quad. That sounds very serious. Huh. Damn. Well, either way, Zack Sabre Jr. gets the points. Um, yeah, let's let's move on. Oh no, the bloody hell. Uh, yeah, we know he torn his quad. Let's uh, I think head to the main event now. Yep, here we are. 87. I'll take that. Let's we'll deal with the Jay White thing in a bit. Uh, Jeff Cobb, apparently he's got amazing form, but he got a 73 in this match. Mm. Uh, but in a superb match, apparently. Uh, John Moxley gets the win. He defeats Jeff Cobb in 18 minutes with a bulldog choke. But during the match, good old Shane Haste had to run in again and attack someone. He attacking Cobb this time. He attacked Bryant a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, uh, John Moxley continuing the undefeated streak and is now tied at the top with Keith Lee. An 87 rated performance. John Moxley with an 89. Jeff Cobb with a 73. The fact this is an 87 rated segment... Um, but the storyline has lost heat. Tells you everything you need to know about how hot this uh, Moxley feud is. Um, but yeah, that is how we end this show. I'm very distracted by the Jay White injury. We're going to have to wait and see what happens there. Um, an 89. Awesome. I didn't think it'd be that good. But hey-ho. I mean, we did get a 98. I completely forgot about that 98. Uh, Kenny Omega and Brian Danielson. Awesome. Uh, before we look at the points... Um, I think we should go back into the office, take a look at Jay White's injury. Um, I mean, he's definitely out and we're just going to have to wait and see uh, what happens in regards to him and obviously the rest of his points, um, where they go, what happens, etc. Um, but yeah, let's jump back into the office and see how serious his injury is and then we'll be back to show you the total points for everyone so far. Cool. I'll see you guys there. Okay, we are back in the office, uh, the day of Dynamite. So next episode will be our Dynamite show. And we haven't just got a Jay White injury. I don't know how the hell this happened, because Boy doesn't wrestle for anyone else, as far as I'm aware. Well, or maybe it's for Ring of Honor. Did Ring of Honor show last night? I don't know. Either way, uh, Claudio Castanelli has got a fractured skull, and Jay White torn his quad, as we can see here. So let's delete those, and let's jump to our medical and see what's going on with everyone. Oh, we can perform surgery 11 months. Oh, and Claudio Castanelli is out for 11 months as well. Oh my goodness. Like, these are all lengthy. I mean, look, Mikey Nichols, broken neck, nine months. 
Uh, Julia Hart will be back soon from maternity. Matt Jackson, he's away. Um, Eddie Kingston, yeah, he's gone for a long time. Dustin Rhodes, four months. Wheeler Utah, hurry up and get back, Wheeler. We need you. Uh, yeah, should we perform this? Perform the surgeries. Medium risk, why not? Complete success. 11 months to 8 months. Jay White, 11 months to if, we, if it's a success. Complete success. 3 months. Oh, go on, Jay. Uh, he can still work angles, but yeah, I'm saying that's obviously meaning that Jay White uh, can no longer compete in the tournament. So in terms of what happens to his place, his points, etc., um, we will make a decision on that. And I will make that decision at Dynamite. We will reveal all in the next episode. But before we go anywhere, let's take a look at the current standings. And looking at this, Volta is in the lead again in Block A. He maintains his top spot with 10 points. Drew Galloway picking up a win on his bounce back from the Volta loss with 8 points, sitting in second. Osprey unfortunately lost against Volta, meaning he stays with his 6. Uh, Jay White could have made it 6, but unfortunately got injured, meaning he is on 4. Matt Cardona and Zack Sabre Jr. also on 4. Zack Sabre Jr., taking advantage of juice one not being available and um jay white um getting injured miro remains on three bandido stays on two darby allen stays on one and juice is still down there with zero points uh moving over to block b uh we've got a tie at the top now keith lee kenny omega and john moxley are all at the top um love to see that very very tight over in block b um i think uh, so keith has the win over kenny so he's got that but keith and moxley still have to face each other as do kenny omega and moxley too i believe uh pack is just behind them on seven points so if any of those guys lose and pack gets the win he leapfrogs all of them uh jeff cobb staying on four brian danielson still on three and then everyone else sitting on two everyone here has won at least one match so far in block b hangman page roosh prince devitt and nick jackson all picking up wins uh meaning there is two points at the bottom of block b uh but that is how we end this one the next episode will be dynamite and i will reveal all on what the plan is regarding jay white um but yeah that's it for this one please like subscribe share Remember, got a 98 in this one. Very happy about that. Um, and I'll see you all over on Dynamite. Bye. Yeah.